Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy, and this is going to be a short video explaining what you get when you purchase our clinical procedure. And don't get that confused with clinical evaluation procedure. That's very important. Our clinical procedure is SYS-009, and our clinical evaluation report procedure is SYS-041. Totally different numbers and very different agendas. One of them, the clinical evaluation procedure is specific to the MDR requirements for creating a clinical evaluation that's a summary of clinical data, not just clinical studies, but also other types of post-market surveillance data, such as complaints and post-market surveillance reports, et cetera. Whereas this procedure, SYS-009, it's specific to conducting a clinical study. So. That's what we're talking about here. Here, let me share my screen. Uh, okay, so first up here. Sorry for the delay there. So this first document here is one of the templates you get. It's an informed consent uh, template. So it's a uh, template 38 and it's a five page template. So a lot of people forget to have an informed consent document. So we've included that here. So that that's included here. Um, gives you an idea. There's some checklist questions in here as well. Uh, the next item I wanted to show you in terms of procedures or uh, templates associated with this procedure is our clinical, um, clinical study protocol. So this is actually the clinical study protocol template. And it's um, quite a bit longer document. Uh, let me see, uh, Joe Wells and I created this one. She did editing, I created the original draft. It's 15 pages, so it's quite a bit longer, but it goes through every single section that you would really need in a clinical study uh, or in a clinical study protocol. So that's our second document uh, that we've created here. Um, so this, this is really the guts of how do you create a clinical study. And any of these sections that might not be applicable, you could write a rationale for why they're not applicable, but you really wanna make sure um, you've thought about this. Is it really something that's not applicable? Almost always they are, or they're questions that would be asked by an IRB or an ethics review board. And we've used this both for Europe and for the US. Um, and we've had it reviewed uh, by some, some different clinical people and have gotten some very good feedback on it. Um, but the, the other part of this, these are just the two templates. Um, you have to generate a report. So you create a summary report. This is not the report, this is the protocol. So then you would convert that into a summary report after you have your data. This also doesn't include clinical, uh, doesn't include biostatisticians analysis of your data. So that would be included in your statistical analysis plan, which is part of the protocol that analysis would be done and then you would provide the data tables and the statistical analysis and that statistical analysis would be included as part of your report. Um, if you had any adverse events that occurred during a clinical study, you would typically provide the full, uh, full raw data on those particular cases um, for each uh, um, case report form, CRF. We don't have a template for a CRF because that would be specific to the type of study you're designing. And every study would have a very different type of case study uh, or case report form. Um, and then the third uh, document that we have here is the actual procedure. So here's SYS9. This is also a 15 page procedure. It shows you um, the product development procedure would be an input to the process. And then the output would be your complaint handling and customer feedback um, because any things that occur in your clinical study, you might be putting that into your complaint handling procedure. Um, you would also become part of your technical documentation, documentation as required by CE marking or Canadian license or some other uh, com country that requires technical documents. And then it would also go into your risk management procedure because clinical studies are a validation activity and you need to document the evidence of the effectiveness of the risk controls that you've implemented as part of your validation or the completeness of them. And then I've referenced a bunch of med devs, some MDCG guidance documents. So the new guidance documents that are created by the um, medical device coordinating group uh, for the EU. And then we have the new EU regulations. We have 21 CFR 812 investigational device exemptions for the FDA. 
We have uh, the 2020 version of 14155, which is the uh, standard for how to conduct a clinical uh, investigation. And then we have 14971 2019, which is the latest version of the risk management standard. And finally, it references our template for an informed consent form. Um, it, I don't know why I didn't reference the, the other template here, but uh, that's referenced in the actual document itself. So I will fix that typo. Uh, by adding that in there. Um, we indicate changes. Uh, this is D5. So when you purchase it, you'll be purchasing D6 because I'll fix that typo. <laughs> Every time I do one of these uh, webinars or re video recordings, I always notice a typo, no matter how many times I proofread it. <laughs> um, so as we go through this, it has a lot of definitions for, the, for what the different... Uh, jargon is in a clinical study. Uh, we talk about uh, patient health safety information. Um, we'll see what else. We have a revision history of the document, the responsibilities of different people in your company, like the, the head of complaint handling and the regulatory affairs or clinical affairs person. And then we go step by step through what the procedure does. And so here we have content that should be in a clinical synopsis. So before you would even create the protocol, you might create a synopsis. So this is sort of like an outline of what would be in your clinical study. It really helps people understand, you know, these are the things we need to have included in it. And then we have the protocol. We also address post-market clinical follow-up studies here as well. Uh, and it references the FDA, uh, sorry, the EU guidance for that and the MDCG guidance. It talks about investigator selection, site selection and study initiation. Um, what else do we have here? Monitoring of studies, conducting clinical studies and PMCF studies, distributing published results for unapproved indications, and then monitoring and measuring. That's monitoring and measurement of this procedure. So are you following this procedure? How many studies have you got going? Are they being done on time? Are there any deviations? So these, this is how would you measure your clinical process? Are you reporting things on the timeline you're supposed to be? Things like that. It's really looking for compliance of uh, with this procedure. Then we have training and retraining requirements, risk management. All our procedures have risk management uh, section for that. Then we have the records. So you would have IRB approval, NSR, SR. So non-significant risk, significant risk determination and confirmation by the regulatory agency. Uh, if you have a register, if you have a regulatory agency involved, uh, the IDE submission, the IDE approval, site monitoring records, uh, and of course, HIPAA compliance. And you would have several documents required for HIPAA compliance. Um, and that's it. So those are all the documents that are included with SYS009. As I said, it's 15 pages. The, um, the template for the study design or protocol, that's another 15 pages. And then you have the case report form um, that we don't have a template for, but we do have informed consent forms. Other documents that are not included, we, we do have IFUs that's sold as part of our labeling procedure. But if you shoot me an email, I'd be happy to send you our template for an instruction for use. Um, you would typically provide that instruction for use as part of the materials that are provided to an IRB in making a decision on your study. And then the last thing that would be included that we also don't have here is an investigator brochure. And that investigator brochure would look very different for different types of studies um, in, in depending on the risk level of that study. So those are things that are mentioned in here, but we don't, don't have a template for an investigator brochure if you're looking for one. Um, when I do, maybe we'll update this. So if you have any questions beyond what I've presented in this video, please don't hesitate to click on the contact us page and schedule a meeting with me. Uh, just click on the calendar link, schedule a 30 minute meeting with me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. And um, I hope this video was helpful in helping you decide whether this is the right procedure that you were looking for. Have a nice day and nice to meet you. Bye-bye.